We'll click on the screen and then zoom out to see if we can find our line work. This is looking very suspicious. Where are our lines? I can see the layers here, but I can't see them anywhere on our screen, even when I'm zoomed all the way out. So there's a few things that you can do to troubleshoot a situation like this. One thing is to select the lines uh, in the layers. So you can do that by clicking here. And if you press shift, you can select all of them at the same time. Now I'm seeing some activity over right here on the edge of our screen, which makes me think that um, our line work is located a little bit further off our canvas. So what we're gonna do is just pan over to the far edge and then drag it into our view. Hopefully this is gonna work for you. But if it doesn't, there's another thing that we can do, which is go back into Rhino and copy this section and bring it closer to the origin. So I'm gonna move mine down here and then I'm gonna try this export again. Gonna keep this scale, say okay and see what happens if I bring in this. There we go. If you're not able to locate your line work somewhere in the canvas, uh, wherever you've drawn it, and drag it into the center area, then try changing the origin point in Rhino first and then exporting the line work. And that should allow your line work to come in closer to the origin in Illustrator. Okay. So now that we do have our line work here in Illustrator and showing up, of course, the first thing we need to do is change our canvas. And I think it was Lumi who said that if you held down Alt while dragging this, uh, it would uniformly scale the canvas, which seems to me like a really handy tool. So thank you, Lumi, for pointing that out. I'm just gonna adjust um, these edges a little bit. But yes, that we want our artboard to completely contain our section. And we might also want it to extend a little bit further. Uh, so I'm gonna press Alt again and extend this a little bit further because as we're creating this section, there may be places where we wanna add annotations and notes and legends. So having a little bit of extra space around this section will definitely help you out in the long run. So now we can go ahead and save this as an Illustrator file. I think that last time I did a tutorial, I forgot to mention that you need to save this as an AI file if you want to work in it again. So I am gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna keep the same name and save it into my, my refs. Yes. So that way, if you need to come back and work on it later, you will have the ability to do that. Now we have our sections into Illustrator. And at this point, it's pretty easy to begin selecting and assigning line weights. So we don't need really much guidance on this because we can see it happening in real time. To change a line weight in Illustrator, you can just go up to the stroke panel up here and I'm gonna choose something like five. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, five is very intense. So I'm gonna take it down to three. That's still pretty uh, crazy. So I'm gonna keep it down to two. Two is gonna be my section cut line weight. Now you can kind of base all of the other elevational information off of that. If you wanna select all your elevational stuff, and assign it a line weight of, for example, 0.5, we'll see it kind of begin to recede into the background. I'm also gonna take my water and I'm going to give it a stroke color. If I double click on here, it'll bring up this, this color picker. I'm gonna give it a, a color, maybe this kind of um, three quarters gray. And I'm gonna assign it a line weight of one. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So these areas where I have these um, vegetation sort of canopies outlined, I want to begin filling in some of this information. So 
I told you guys that you should begin exploring the graphic assets that I provided. And I'm going to open up that file. And in there, we have a folder called CAD. In CAD, we have blocks. And here you'll find a whole bunch of uh, different blocks that you can use. Now, these are AutoCAD blocks, but AutoCAD and Illustrator work really well together. So we can open up some of these and see what's inside. If I take silhouettes, Okay, I'm going to take this opportunity to show you guys the type of troubleshooting that we are going to have to do pretty much on a daily basis while we're working between different types of programs and files. So I had just said like you can drag in a DWG file with no problem. And then I went to the graphic refs, I went to the CAD blocks, and I tried to drag one of them in. And I got a note from Illustrator that said, this is an unknown format and cannot be opened. So I, I know what the problem is, but I suspect you wouldn't know what the problem is. So what happens when you run into issues like this is we go to Google. Um, and literally what I do is Google that exact phrase. So I just Googled it right there, Illustrator not opening DWG files. And I'm finding on the Adobe support community that somebody has already asked this question uh, can't drag DWG files from AutoCAD into Illustrator. It's giving me this error, da, 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 da. What's the problem? So um, this, first que this first comment says you have to back save the drawing file. So what I'm doing now is I've opened my AutoCAD LTE and I've opened all of the blocks in there. And I'm going to go ahead and back save this. So even if you've never used AutoCAD before, you don't need to worry about anything here. All we're doing is going into Save As, Drawing, and then I'm going to go to this drop-down panel and just select 2004. So I'm going to save it, replace it, and then I will go to Illustrator and see if that worked. So it looks like it did. Now we have this DXF DWG options import panel. And guys, this is the type of thing I work with on a daily basis. When I have questions, I don't always know the answers. I have to Google them. I have to work around them. I have to figure it out. So don't let these messages set you back. Um, investigate for yourselves what might be happening and then use the tools that you have to uh, figure out how to fix that. So I'm going to say OK. Now we have our file brought into Illustrator here. And I think I'm just going to use some of these really sketchy trees over here. So I think I'll, I'll just select all of them and use copy and paste. Now I'm probably going to have to scale these trees a little bit. And we can always tell um, how high something is if we, if we just draw a little reference line here. Remember on our last tutorial, we changed the units using this little box here to millimeters. So if you don't see your ruler, uh, press Control R and your rulers will come up. And then you can right click on this little corner panel and change it to millimeters. Now we can look and see what the height of this line is over here in our properties panel. So it's saying it's 38, which means if we're one meter equals one millimeter, that means this is 38 meters tall. So that's pretty large for trees. So I'm just going to uh, scale them down. Um, I'm going to do it here. I'm probably going to scale them by about half. Now, if I look at this line, it's about 20 meters. That seems fairly good for this neighborhood because we do have some more mature parkland um, and then we also have residential trees here. So now I can uh, begin populating my model with these uh, figures. Now make sure when you go to your layers that you create a new layer. I'm gonna call mine uh, Site Assets and I'm going to put these 
trees into that layer. And then I'm going to select these red lines because I don't want them to show up as red. And how I could select all of them at once is to go up here to the selection menu and go select same appearance. That's gonna select all of the lines that look identical to the one that I had originally selected. And now I'm going to double click on the stroke uh, panel and just change it to black. I can also change the stroke here if I wanna make them very lightweight, I can do that. And then I would probably group them. So you can select all of the information for one tree and just go control G to group it. I'm gonna do that with all of them. And now we have trees that we can drag around and use within our model. So we can kind of begin to replace those canopies that we drew in before. And you'll note in this um, elevation file that there are a bunch of different trees and tree types that you could work with. Some are gonna be more line intensive than others. So just be aware of that. But I also want to encourage you guys to begin to search online for these types of assets. If you're looking for uh, different assets so that all of our sections don't look identical, uh, you can begin searching online. And it's as simple as looking up tree vector illustrator. And you're going to come up with all of these free downloads where you can Look and see what other people have created and begin downloading those assets for yourself and building up your own library. You can do this with the people, animals, cars, etc. I've given you guys some ideas to start with in these blocks, um, but you can uh, definitely, you, you'll want to keep building up your library. So I hope that gives you a good next direction to go with your sections. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys on Monday.